give you a second. Let me, let me share my screen. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are well. Thank you so much for joining the conversation to, today with regards to applied digital skills. As uh, Devon mentioned, I am the Assistant Director of Library Services, as well as, a, as an Applied Digital Skills Ambassador. Um, so I'm going to begin the presentation with just a brief overview about what Applied Digital Skills um, entails. So, um, Apply Digital Skills um, in its simplest form is a video-based online curriculum created by Google. And its um, purpose is to prepare students of all ages for the, um, for the growing number of jobs that require digital skills. And I have just a short video, it's, it's less than a minute and a half, just explaining what it entails. The role of schools has changed drastically because of the use of technology. It's no longer sufficient to be just a textbook and paper classroom. Applied digital skills is like a website that you go on and it'll give you a task and work you through it using videos. At the end of the video, it's going to have like a list. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. So you're going to do it yourself. Employers are looking for students that have the collaboration skills that a lot of them are not coming out of high school with. This program feeds right into that need. I thought you were like type like no <laughs> Very seldom do you have a project that engages all of your students all the time and the applied digital skills seems to do that. We do more like mostly fun activities like like I say dream vacation, Paris, the city of love. I really want to go there. The video material gives me more freedom to interact one-on-one -on -one with my kids. To have that kind of relationship with them is what makes my classroom one of their favorite classes. We can be ourselves and be have fun, you know? Yeah. Just like it's teaching so many of the skills that are, our kids need once they leave high school or even start jobs in high school. From the critical thinking to the collaboration to organization skills, all those things are wrapped into this program. And to be able to utilize that across the board at all schools, I think would be invaluable. And Google is um, definitely committed um, to every student have act, having access to um, training as well as access to tools and skills for not only the careers of today, but of the future as well. Danielle is going to talk to you about some of the statistics and then we'll get into the platform. Good afternoon and thank you again for joining us. And I'm Danielle Cobra Lewis. Head of Research and Instructional Services at Shepherd Library and CCU. And let me share my screen as well. Hold on for just one moment. And I also have a link for Google Applied Digital Skills, and we'll go into it more, but I know some of you are probably thinking, and where can I find Google Applied Digital Skills? So I will get a link to you in the chat right about now. So the challenge we know right now is that the job market is changing and students may not feel confident or have the skills that employers are looking for. And here are some of the statistics that, um, that we know of. 18 to 25 year olds believe their education gives them skills they need. What 44% of 18 to 
to 25 year olds who believe uh, their education gives them the skills they need to enter the workforce. So only 44%. Um, and only uh, one third of the proportion of 2020 jobs. Um, so that was 2020 again. Those jobs required skills that were commonly um, taught. So only one third of the jobs in 2020 required skills that were commonly taught. So that means not that many um, skills were commonly taught. And 12% is the youth unemployment rate, which is a seven year high. So these are some of the statistics that we know now. Oh, you need to click on your presenter button. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you. This also gives us an opportunity to present digital literacy skills and technology skills and lessons that build these practical skills for our students to enable them to have success in these fast growing job sectors. So 44, 49% of today's job openings require only a high school degree and not necessarily a four year college degree. And then there is 150% uh, of a growth rate in these digital-based middle-skill jobs compared to other kinds of jobs. And let me just get this out of the way. And there's more than 50% of the expected jobs. And this, again, it was 2020, were um, requiring a, an engineering mindset. So this is those coding and those um, tech skill jobs, which is exactly what the applied digital skills is helping students grow into. So today with our workshop, we're going to give you a chance to learn more, of course, about applied digital skills. We're gonna give you a peek inside the curriculum and we're gonna make sure that before you leave here, you know exactly how to get started. So as we mentioned before, Applied Digital Skills is a video uh, curriculum. And as you saw in the video, it gives you those great step-by-step -step instructions. And it's over, over 120 lessons and hours, hours and hours of lessons for so many, so many areas that you can imagine um, from English to history and anything in between. So the digital skills that, again, for that job ready market, coding, spreadsheets, web design, graphic design, and then those practical life skills right now that students really need for the job market, the four C's, critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. And we know students really enjoy um, group work, right? So they're gonna get that group decision-making skills um, and also research, which is one of our favorites, right? And they're gonna utilize all of the Google products, which are free, which is really good. And these are aligned with state standards. So for the school media librarians, this is great. And they're all, already been in more than 200 class, 200,000, um, they've been used by 200,000 students and in many classrooms. And so this is really great if you are thinking about you know, utilizing this, it is used in um, these classrooms and has these state aligned standards. All right, so let's test drive applied digital skills. So um, Danielle is going to put a link um, in the chat so you can follow along with us into the platform. But in the meantime, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and so our library has been utilizing applied digital skills now for two years. We're one of the libraries that received the ALA um, grant. It was, it was ALA in partnership with um, Google. And the grant, of course, came with um, $1,500 as um, for, for creating a program utilizing applied digital skills. So for our um, grant proposal, we um, 
incorporated applied digital skills into our first year experience course, as well as a faculty um, training sessions um, for our library, do, library during COVID as well. So our initial foray with this particular um, free um, software was with our first year learners in that uh, um, first year experience program. So I've just shared my screen and what you're looking at is the Applied Digital Skills homepage. And there are a lot of great resources um, here. It allows you to enter the resource as a student, as well as a um, learner or, uh, or teacher. And so let's start exploring. If you look at the upper uh, left-hand corner, you will see Applied Digital Skills. And then you have three different tabs, one for lessons, one for start learning, and one for starting to teach. So let's browse some of the lessons that are available. So if you click on browse lessons, and what you have, you have access to the full collection um, that is available through Applied Digital Skills. And as you can see, there are several ways to filter through the collection. Um, the current collection, collection includes 165 um, lessons and you can filter by audience, you can filter by tool, as well as you can filter by topic. So is there, if you are teaching a particular course and you're looking for resources for business or career readiness, communications, things of that sort, you can definitely choose by topic. So I'm gonna to filter today by adult learners. And just look, and as you can see, 45 lessons are geared towards adult learners. And so once, and I'm gonna click into a lesson just so you can see what it entails. So once you um, find a lesson that is of interest to you, um, for libraries, we're always planning events, right? So let's click on uh, plan event. And as you can see, it gives you information about um, example outcomes. And you scroll down a little bit more, you have activities as well as teaching materials. So activities, it, um, the lesson tells you the tools that you will be utilizing. It gives you the time to complete the lesson. And it also talks about the skills that you will acquire in completing this um, lesson plan, this lesson as well. Um, now on the teaching side, what's great is the support resources for planning your particular course or workshop or lesson. So it does provide you with a lesson plan that um, Google provides you with certificates of completion. So once the student has completed this particular course and or lesson, you can provide them with um, a certificate. And of course, there are more features that um, Ms. Cobra Lewis will get into later. But also I wanted to show you the lesson plan and how thorough it was. So I'm gonna download it really quickly. And as you can see, the lesson, the lesson plan for planning the event, it gives you learning objectives. It gives you um, the duration of how much time you are expected to spend on completing this lesson. You also have the materials that you need um, for the lesson. And again, it just breaks every da everything down by description, by minute, um, et cetera, so forth. Also, what I really love is the prep. It tells you, it gives you just those tips that, you know, arrive um, before the students set up, get everything up and running. Um, so it just gives you just a great, um, great, great tips and great overviews of things that you can do to make your um, workshop or lesson better for your students. So it's really great. So it, it gives you all the lesson plans for each video within the module. So let me go back. Now, if you go back and click again on apply digital skills. Oh, my screen went away one second. Let me stop sharing. I'm having technical, technical, technical difficulties. One second, please.
All right. Share again. I apologize for that. Can everyone see my Apply Digital um, Skills stream? I'm just curious. Yes, Danielle, yes, thank you. Because for some reason my screen just went blank on my double screens. So, so, um, so, so we were in the browse lesson um, portion of Apply Digital Skills. So again, the collections, the digital tools, as well as the lesson plans. Also within the lessons, you also have the option of looking at the teaching resources. So if you click on start teaching, what it does is it takes you to all the various teaching resources available within this particular curriculum. So there's the most popular lessons, there are rubrics um, available for instructors. Let me scroll one second. There are rubrics available for instructions. There's of course the starter guide here and videos just to help teachers, instructors, librarians get started with their respective lesson plans. So again, a lot of great materials, a lot of great videos, rubrics and lesson plans to get you started with your curriculum. So Mrs. Coba Lewis is going to walk you through how to start a class and also how to monitor your students while you are in a class. So once you are once you are ready to start utilizing applied digital skills, you can sign in and you will need to have a Google account. And all you have to do is sign in and it will assume that you want to be either. A, I think it's going to automatically have you in as a teacher or actually, okay, a learner. So right now it has me as a learner and it'll say, start learning, browse lessons. So automatically as a learner, you can browse lessons and you can easily change your profile to teacher. And all you have to do is click on profile and right here, switch to teacher. And I just want to point out one more thing. If you do utilize Google Classroom, this works well with Google Classroom. And it says um, under teacher, it'll say that here. And here's the teaching resources area again, right up here. As Ms. Scott Branch showed you, you'll see those teaching resources, checklist, those video tutorials again easily accessible for you. So back to my dashboard. So when you want to enroll students in your course, once you browse lessons, all you have to do is when you are looking at any of these lessons, back to school, for example, create a class. So this is the back to school. So it has all these lessons in here, design a poster, introduce yourself. So for example, this would have been great for the first week of class. So let's say you want to utilize this. All you have to do is click on that particular session and hit add to class. And if I wanted to, I could add it to a class that I have already previously created, or I just create a class right on the fly. Now I want, I'm hoping that you all would join a class right now. So in the chat box, I have the link to apply digital skills. 
I'm going to put in one more time. And I also have a way for you to join. So when you do create a class, it's right here. And how to join a class is right here. And here is the link. So I've we have created this class for today. And here's the class code. So I'm going to put the class code in here. And to join this class, all you have to do when you are in Applied Digital Skills is click on Join a Class. And then you would put in this code. Well, this is the teacher code, but because I'm in teacher mode. So let me get out of the teacher mode. So I'm hoping that someone will join so that way I can show you a few more things. Since I'm in teacher mode, I, I cannot, I'm joining as a teacher, but here is, I will join as a student. I'm gonna change my profile so I can show you what it looks like. And again, see how easy it is to switch back and forth roles. So you could see what your students see very easily. So I'm gonna join again, join a class. I'm gonna join the class that we just set up. Oh, now it's just a big, <laughs> that's a big link. And so it's going to say, is this the class you want to join? Yes. And now I am in this class and I can see these are the current lessons and activities that, you know, let's say this is that my instructor would like for me to complete. So hopefully, let's see. Let me know if anyone is going to join. Well, so this is on again on the learner side. On the teacher side, you think I got in? Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Let's see. So that's good. So on the teacher side, so this is again the learner side. On the teacher side, I'm going to change my profile. I can see if you got in. So let me switch to teacher. And this is the best part. When you are an instructor and you're utilizing this, five of five students join, wonderful. I'm going to click on the class now, and I'm going to click under people. And so I can see who joined right here. And I can see if you started any lessons, I could see what you worked on and what progress you've made in your lessons. So let's say, not to pick on anyone, but let's say, Caroline, you worked on anything, or Laura, Lori, if you just clicked on a video, it will start to show some kind of progress made right here. And you could see if your students are actually doing what they say they're going to do. You know how students are like, yeah, I worked on that, um, which is really nice. And here is the direction. So you could tell your students, you can cut and paste this into Blackboard or Canvas. And for co-teachers, you can give them this code and then your co-teachers can see exactly what you see. Does anyone have any questions? So again, apply to your skills, it is so easy to go again back and forth from the learner side for you to learn skills and from the teacher side for you to also create a class and to ensure that students are getting these tech skills for the job market today, which is so important. I know that we had one question come in through the Google form. Um, someone asked, how does the Applied Digital Skills Program work for academic libraries? Um, and so, I was just kind of curious how you all were able to see that connection between this program and your first year experience um, program at um, NC Central. It actually worked very well um, in our academic course that we teach. Um, this co Danielle and I both teach the uh, first year experience course. And so um, one of the, well, several lessons that we, we, we cover in that class, we talk about, we get students acclimated to um, 
life here at NCCU, research skills, but we also have a, sec a section of the course where we talk about being career ready um, at each stage of their college career and introduce them to resources. And so the lessons that we have included in that particular course um, was starting a resume, um, starting to think about how to develop your brand as an individual, how to edit a resume, how to write a, a professional email, and as well as how to write a professional cover letter. So one of the great things about Applied Digital Skills, it's, it's just so much great content that can easily be incorporated into your classes or workshops. And the great thing is you do not have to commit to <laughs> Applied Digital Skills because you can start learning and you don't have to log into um, the Google platform. Now, if you want to track the progress of your students, or track the progress of yourself, then of course you will need to log in and you do need a Google email. But you can go in, you can download lesson plans, you can learn the skills without being tracked, without logging in to the software. So that's a, a great feature, but the, the but mainly when we incorporate it into our first year experience course, we focused on, of course, that there is a, sex, a session, um, uh, there is a lesson on research. Um, so we, 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 we have not utilized it for our class because we follow that utilizing the library resources within Shepherd, but we do use it to enhance students' digital skills, utilizing the digital tools to create various projects for the class. We also, uh, we just received a question about, while it's very easy to use the class here, can, e can this easily link or embed into other LMS like Canvas? I know this was created for sure um, to embed in Google Classroom. So that's that's a mm -hmm. good question. I feel like it, there is, there's, you can link, but not necessarily, I don't think it embeds, but don't get me wrong. Um, they haven't said, because they want it's a Google product, so they really want you to use, of course, Google. Google um, <laughs> once you use Google products, um, so I'm well, not sure, do, not sure if it does that. And we use um, Applied Digital Skills. We we incorporate the links into our Blackboard shell, and um, I didn't see a building block um, for Applied mm -hmm. Digital Skills to add it to a Blackboard or or a canvas or anything like that. But the links are the links and your ability to download the videos. You can definitely download the videos into a Blackboard or a canvas for sure. But beyond that, I don't think that, that from what I've seen and from and the trainings that I've attended, I haven't seen a, a, a building block specifically to incorporate it into the shell of the platform. Um, and the links they have definitely like up here, this link will go plan an event. It's, you know, a definite link that will go to this lesson. And I just received a, an email from, okay, this, okay, Google Classroom with your LMS. Okay, so someone did say, okay, so you link it side by side windows. Okay, so there's different things that you can do. Thank you so much, um, Don, for putting that into um, so it looks like there is, there's some ways that you can do it, um, but it's not, uh, it's not highly advertised, <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Does anyone have any more questions? I want to make sure that before, um, let me share my screen again. Let me see. Not for just... Well, hopefully you were able to, you know, sign into sign into uh, Google Apply Digital Skills. And if you had not created a Google account, you can create one by going to accounts. Let's see. Let me see which one am I. Okay, so let me share again.
You can create an account by going to accounts.google.com forward slash sign up. And many people, of course, have a Google accounts, but you can always create a new one just for this. We had some professors that created an account specifically for teaching with applied digital skills. And again, this is our class code. If you would like to join later, feel free to do so. And switching back again from teacher to learner, again, very easy. Here's again, uh, developing a research topic. It's one that's very popular um, in applied digital skills. And this it takes about three to five hours for um, this particular session. And there's other sessions that take a little bit less time. There is now, as of September, there was 160. Now there's 165 this month. So they do add consistently and constantly to the lessons. And we want, we are hoping that you fill out this nice form for us here. And I'm going to shoot this over this attendee form in the chat for us. With signing up for the Applied Digital Skills Program, did you all have to go through some sort of training to be instructors of the curriculum? Or well, like, is there any sort of onboarding process if you know, a public library wanted to become part of the applied digital skills program or a community college class wanted to use this curriculum. With becoming an ambassador, once you, you start utilizing um, the curriculum, they, all, they actually um, reach out to you to ask you if you want to be a part of the ambassador program. So we've created a, a, um, several courses. I know I've created a probably 20, 25 courses for various events um, for the library, as well as for um, the first year experience program. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if that triggered it or if it was a grant that we received, but they did reach out to us to, um, to, for us to join the uh, ambassador program. Um, and in addition to that, um, there was training that was provided um, once we received our grant, we went through a training program with a certified Google um, trainer and certified, um, certified Google trainer. And then once you become an ambassador, there, there's an onboarding process for that process as well. So in the chat, I have the um, just a couple of questions for the a form here for you to fill out. But also, this is just a nice little snippet of where to go, the Google Applied Digital Skills link teacher resources, troubleshooting, and we have, and you'll get this presentation, of course, at the end, and also our contact information. And again, uh, we have this post-workshop survey, and this is the class code that you'll put into the survey. And these are just more great resource links for you. Um, the website with the, the curriculum, guide, again, the troubleshooting, and then if you want to train other librarians on these digital skills. So you can get started right away. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the good points that was made in the chat was, uh, it seems this has great potential for students in general, but also for our student workers when we need them mm -hmm. to learn how to use a specific Google service. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we also have incorporated as incorporated the resource as a part of staff training as well, because there's a lot of tools um, that Google provides that some of my staff did not know how to utilize. So we have created a staff course as well, just so everyone can be on the same page about, you know, how to um, utilize um, Excel or how to um, do certain things or annotate certain things in a document. So there are a lot of great skills that staff can learn as well. And I want to show one more thing with regards to this particular platform as well. Let me share my screen again. And so this is what I was I'm trying to sh show earlier before my screen went out. But these, this here is the um, teaching resources. So again, 
there's the starter, there's the starter guy here. There's information about uh, remote learning tips. But one of the great things about this particular platform is the help center here, um, as well as marketing classroom poster information. But the lesson plans and the rubrics, these two uh, resources are invaluable when you are planning a class and you just want some um, additional information about how I should grade this particular lesson and the proficiency that students should get out of it. So I definitely wanted to show um, this information here as well as the tutorials for instructors um, and teachers with regards to um, how to get started, what it is, explore the curriculum, curriculum um, test the lesson plans and things of that sort. So just a lot of great information, uh, great information and resources just to get you started utilizing this um, platform. Does anyone think they will actually you'll start utilizing applied digital skills? Did you see something that uh, of interest to you today? Thank you. That's great. That's good. Okay. That's good. The rubrics are good. And uh, everything is customizable, especially the rubrics you can customize. Mm -hmm. Well, the rubrics are customizable. <laughs> that's a that's about it. We'll probably tell. Oh, okay. Is there anything else um, anyone wants to explore in terms of the collection, the curriculum? Is there anything that else that we can show you with regards to this platform? And another great thing about it, it's not just for, you know, libraries and, and teachers. Um, if you have children, <laughs> I have a middle schooler who, who was tracked out. So I was able to get him to create a lesson specifically for him so he could uh, learn various digital tools as well. The drawing features, um, getting ready for high school, um, creating a, a, a calendar utilizing Google Calendar so he can track his activities from sports to extracurricular. So again, it's for, it's for libraries, it's for teachers, as well as it can be used in your personal life as well. So I have found this resource to be invaluable um, and I have used it in so many different um, ways um, in terms of personal and professional. The question, how do you switch back and forth between um, the student mode and the teacher mode? And let me log in. Oh, you're logged in, Daniel. Okay, I'm sorry. No problem. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, okay. <laughs> that's what happened. Sorry about that. Uh, once you're logged in, I think you're automatically be on learner mode. And then all you have to do is uh, hit profile and then you'll see switch to, and I'm already in teacher, teacher mode, but all you have to do is keep switching back and forth. If you're in learning, you just hit profile, switch to teacher and hit yes, change role. So you, you just change roles very easily. Keep going back and forth, not a problem. And you'll know that you're in one role or the other. Do either look over here or look here. You'll see the teaching resources here and you'll know that you're in the teaching role. I hope that answered that question. You mentioned using this internally for staff. How do you differentiate between the content that you might see as fitting in, in a classroom environment versus like an adult learner? Oh. 
like you're on mute. Within um, applied digital skills, it allows you to um, explore content specifically for adult learners. Okay. And so basically, um, when, when we introduced applied digital skills to our staff, so everyone could be on the same page with regards to what it entails, we uh, created a curriculum. So for one, for everyone to be familiar with the resources, and two, for folks to um, to level up their skills in terms of the tools that they did not know. Because we have a marketing committee that, that, um, that uh, plans various events and create promotional materials and things of that sort. But we also have other staff who can do that beyond the marketing committee. So this was just a way to basically level up other folks' skills so they can too plan events, whether they are student-centered events and or um, out-facing um, events for our community and, and, and so on and so forth. So basically what I, I do, I utilize the adult content that they have in applied digital skills and I created the content for staff based upon um, feedback from them of the skills they wanted to enhance. That's great. I mean I could definitely see some of our public libraries who do more kind of tech tool instruction for adult patrons finding this useful as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know with public libraries, they do a lot with helping people to find employment. So the resume features and how to navigate the various um, resume templates utilizing the Google products, um, very helpful. Folks, do we have any final questions? All right, well, I would definitely recommend folks fill out the um, Google ambassador survey that Danielle and Jamila shared. Um, I'll also include a link to our feedback survey in the chat right now. Um, but have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon. Um, next up in our Tech Tools webinar series, um, Maggie Lasher from Davidson College will be will in on ALA's project outcome tool. So if you're interested in more instruction um, related to Tech Tools, feel free to check that out. That's on November 8th. And thank, thank you both um, for your time and for giving us such an extensive tour of the program. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much for joining. Is it all right if um, Danielle and Jamila, we share your contact info in the follow up email in case folks want to reach out to you? individually for questions? Absolutely, I'm, I'm That'll okay with that. <laughs> That'll be great, thanks. Great. And we'll have the slides to use.